we've been doing our own bees, so I'm the timer, and he does all the manipulations. They've been using it in Europe for over 10 years, and the EPA just approved it about a year and a half ago in America. Yeah. And then I spread it around. And then you connect it to the battery for 2 minutes 20 seconds. Should I connect the mirror? Mm -hmm. Contact. So we wait 2 minutes and 20 seconds. What's the time there? 2 minutes, it's almost time. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, yeah, no. And then we leave it in for two minutes. Leave it in for two minutes. See? Done. Done. Today is January 25th. It's about 50 degrees out, and you can see the bees are out and about. And this is hive number one, and it's really looking pretty good. I think it's going to make it through the winter. Hive number two, on the other hand, is looking pretty weak. I'll be surprised if it makes it through the winter. My friends Ed and Mary from e &M Gold Beekeeper stopped by about a month ago to do a winter treatment for Varroa mite. That's how the video started. And then about two weeks ago, Ed stopped by the barn and talked a little bit more about Varroa mite. So we're going to go right into that. But before we do, I just want to show you the bottom board and show you what the Varroa mite looks like. This is what the Varroa mite looks like. It looks like a little red tick. Over here, this is the small hive beetle. This is another big problem for beekeepers and, and beehives. The idea of this bottom board, this is called the Freeman bottom board. The bees will force the hive beetles out of the hive. They fall through the screen in the hive and into vegetable oil and drown. All right, I'm gonna close this up and we'll go in and talk to Ed. This is my friend Ed from EMGoldBeekeepers.com. Ed and Mary are both helping me out with the bees this year. And you guys came by to treat the, the hives for Varroa mite. Do you want to talk a little bit about Varroa mite? I'm sure a lot of people don't exactly know what they are. Varroa mites is a parasite that um, hopped and jumped from the Asian honeybee, the Apis serrana back in the early 80s and probably came to America and the Western, Western world via mass transportation. Um, the Apis serrana in, in Asia, the bee has capability where it can groom itself. So back in Asia, they have a symbi symbiotic relationship and the Apis serrana tolerates the parasitic mite. But in, in America in particular, the Apis mellifera um, grooming is a recessive trait in the western honeybee. So when it first hit, it decimated bee, bee, beehives around America. And for the last uh, 30 years, bee, beekeepers have been dealing with massive losses of bees and trying various ways of dealing with it from natural, trying to create a, a bee that can handle the mite to using hard and soft chemicals. The mite is a, a vector that, that, can that can transmit up to 18 viruses. And uh, what we want to do is try to reduce the mite load. We don't want to get rid of the mites completely because if you do that, you'll develop a super mite for the mites that didn't get killed. We just want to uh, bring the mite load down to an acceptable level that the bees can, can make it. About a year and a half ago, the EPA approved oxalic acid Okay. For, for mite treatment. Uh, oxalic acid has been used in Europe for probably the last 10 years, maybe longer, and it's been considered organic. Um, it's ac actually simple whip leach. Uh, and wood bleach? Whip leach. And it's a, contain a container whip leach that can probably take care of 100 hives. It costs like $6.28. Um, there's two ways of applying it. One way is that you would uh, drizzle it on the bees uh, late in the summer. And another way is called sublimation, where you actually heat up uh, one or two grams of the, of the oxalic acid, and it sublimates, meaning, I th uh, if I understand sublimation correctly, it goes directly from a solid to a gas. And that hive is uh, 
completely immersed in this cloud of, of gas of, um, after you've heated up the oxalic acid. And um, their theory is that uh, the oxalic acid uh, collects in the, the pads of the mite and it's translated to their equivalent of a blood system of the insect and that then goes through their body and kills, kills the mites. But over a period of a week after you've you know, treated, treated with the oxalic acid, you're killing mites. The only thing that oxalic acid is good for is sporadic mites, the mites that are on the body of the bee. During the summer, 85% of the mites are, are in the cells. They're, being, they're, they're in that breeding cycle and being produced. So during the summer, oxalic acid is really not a, a, good, a good solution. Well, that's good to know. I know that after a few days after that you treated the bees, I looked in the bottom board, and now we have the Freeman bottom board, so you can really see. And I was able to see the mites, and they're a little red. They look like little red ticks. And so they had obviously fallen off the bees and, and into there. Right. And so uh, I know that uh, the one hive is looking really strong. I felt good about that. It was amazing. I think uh, yesterday, January 12th, was about 64 degrees yep. yeah, here. Yeah. And uh, the one hive was, was really out and a lot of activity. And the other hive doesn't look very good. And the, the, the downside there with the small hive is when there's so few bees, it's just gonna, I don't think it's going to make it through the next cold snap we have. Right. Even if the queen is alive, I just think that the yeah. cluster is too small. You might be surprised. You might get a cluster that tiny that might make it through. We've had be... and, and, and then you'll have to build it up in, in the spring. Well, I tell you, this is all great stuff to know. And I know that you're going over to another farm, so I really appreciate you stopping by. Thanks. And uh, we'll see you again soon. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Mm -hmm.